I'm ready. I got my four stations set up. Station one is the plumbing station. Station two is the cutting section. Station three, all of the plumbing gear set up. And station four, which is of course outside, gluing station. I forgot I have one more bonus section. Can you see it? Rags. start with the horizontal view. I think most everything's okay here. This is going to be the primary return and this is the emergency return. You're going to have a Spears gate valve there, 90 degree elbows, use the red PVC unions right here so I can take it apart, 90 degree elbow up to the MD Elite overflow and then I think this will also be fine. This is my Reef Octopus return pump and then I have one inch flexible silicone tubing attached into a street elbow with a hose barb adapter. So this view I think looks okay. But the problem is right here because my original thought with the MD Elite Overflow was to do a street elbow here and a 90 degree elbow here so that I could put these two pipes to the rear of the tank. But then for the return line, it's coming up here, you see the return line? It's gonna be splitting off in a T here and it's gonna have to go either behind or in front. So you're gonna have like double thickness, like here and here. So I figured why don't I just pull these, instead of putting in these elbows, just go straight down, straight down, 90 degree elbow underneath into the stand and then just hug it along the top. That'll give me plenty of space between the pipes and the sump down below. So I think that's what we're gonna try. This is just a cheap PetSmart Petco 40 gallon breeder tank. The MD Elite Overflow Box. I had to drill this myself, which is in a previous video. This is the backside, has a, I believe, one and a half inch here, and then one inch bulkheads down here. For the sump, I'm using the MD Elite 30 inch, I believe it's 30 inch overflow by Trigger Systems. This is overkill. Okay, don't let anybody tell you otherwise, overkill. But I have it, I wanna use it. This thing is fantastic, a little bit on the spendy side, but you get what you pay for. I won't go into too much details, the links are below if you wanna see more about that product. Cheap PVC cutters, they work fine. They don't leave the cleanest edges, so you're gonna to wanna to definitely use some sort of sandpaper to get all the burrs off of the edges. These are probably way too small. Dry fitting is good, but dry fitting does not give you accurate measurements. So you're going to have to measure because when you dry fit, the pieces will never go in all the way. So dry fitting is important, especially when you're like logically thinking it through. Also the problem with dry fitting is sometimes it's almost impossible to get those pieces apart. I've used large wrenches, pliers before, but it just, just messes up the PVC and makes it look ugly. So just pick up one of these cheapo, I don't know what they're called, strap wrench maybe, and then you can just tighten it around the PVC itself, turn it off way, way easier. All of the gray, they're all schedule 80. The only schedule 40 I have is actually the PVC, which almost always comes in white. 90 degree elbows, street elbows, and these are super handy for going into like bulkheads. So if you look here, here's a bulkhead, right? They go directly into the bulkhead. Couplings, if you make mistakes, have couplings on hand because then you can just cut your PVC wherever you made the mistake, throw a coupling on there. Tease, this is a Spears double union check valve. Fantastic. Check valves, in case you don't know, make the water only go one direction. Unions, Schedule 80, throw them in wherever you can because you can disconnect them. Hose barb adapter, the Spears gate valve. If you are gonna be running a Herbie style or bean animal style overflow, I'm running a Herbie style, get this. Plastic hose clamps, use these wherever it's gonna come in contact with water. Make sure you pick up the clear primer because most primer is purple, but they sell clear primer. So you have the clear primer, clear cement, and then this is only to connect your bulkheads to your PVC and use gloves. This is stinky and it's messy. We are going to start by dry fitting. So we'll check back in and we'll show you the results of the dry fit. By the way, I'm hoping it only takes me like two hours to dry fit, probably longer, but we're gonna go for two hours, maybe three hours. Told me I'm your anchor, I told you you're my pole Through the wind and fire we try to hold on We build this ship together, searching for a home Despite the storm that hit us, we're still on board Dancing in the moonlight, the world just stop and stares We got no destination, I'll take you anywhere All the doors we've opened, and all the books we've closed Words just come together 
think I'm done with the dry fit. So let me turn around and show you what I did and some changes I made that I think is gonna work okay. The primary and then the emergency overflow, I had to make them, if you look here, two different heights because they're gonna crisscross at one point. So if you come down here and look, see this? Right here, both these pieces are gonna crisscross. So the emergency line had to be able to fit completely below. So that's why it's two separate heights. But it looks pretty good, although you're not even gonna see this, this backside here. I ended up taking the drain lines down over a foot. Sorry, the return lines down over a foot so that it would go underneath both of the drain lines. And then I put a T in there, put the T off underneath, and then you can see it goes down into the return chamber and it has a little spigot line there that I'm gonna attach some silicone to. This is gonna work, although there's an inherent problem that you'll notice here. The return line is gonna go up through here and then it's a shorter distance to travel to this return. And not only that, this return over here is longer, but it has to go through one 90 degree angle and two 90 degree angles. So that means on this side, the flow is gonna be less. Dry fitting, it looks all wackadoodle and it looks all uneven because a dry fit never, like these pieces here, never push in all the way. So you really have to do your best as a dry fit. Dry fit is not for exact measurements so much as it is to make sure your overall design works. Originally for these both these lines, I had unions on both of them, but I figured I'm not gonna put the unions in because if I want to in the future, all I need to do is just cut the line. Cut, cut, and then I can put unions in, no problem. And then I'm not going to glue the PVC here into here. I'm just gonna push it down really hard. If there's too much salt, creep over time, then I'll glue them, but I wanna be able to remove that. That's pretty much the dry fit. Overall, I'm pretty darn happy with how that turned out. I'm gonna grab a little lunch, and then I'm gonna come back and start gluing them, and maybe we could even get water in this later today, but probably not till tomorrow. Gloves are absolute must. I have to make sure I line these up perfectly or it's gonna be all cattywampus in my tank. Open for me. Oh my goodness. Hold up, I'll be right back. Strap clamp. Okay. I, I, I did it again. I am this close to like losing my mind. This entire piece is now completely destroyed. See this? This is the union. This piece here has to go on the other side. And I don't know why I keep doing this, but I take it out thinking, oh, this will be easier to connect. But then you can't put this back here because if you look here, how am I supposed to screw this piece on without this? It's, it's impossible. So not only did I completely just waste this $20 something Spears piece, but now all of this is worthless because it's all glued together, all worthless. Ugh, I'm so frustrated. I just, ugh. It's only 4.45, which means I actually finished this entire plumbing project before dinner time. And for my first fish tank, that is unheard of. And I only made one mistake and it was correctable, which is amazing. This tank is gonna be the frag tank. It's gonna be the coral quarantine tank and some fish in there as well. And I've already been talking with a buddy of mine and I'm ready to do a thousand dollar coral purchase so i can't wait to show that with all of you as always everybody thanks for watching please subscribe to my first fish tank and marine depot happy reefing